Bill C-81 is strong on good intentions, but palpably weak on implementation. It's called the Act to Ensure a Barrier-Free Canada, but it does not require a single barrier anywhere in Canada ever to be removed. People with disabilities need and deserve better than that. Bill C-81, at its core, at its heart, is driven by the commendable notion that the federal government will enact enforceable regulations called accessibility standards that will tell federally regulated organizations what they've got to do. But it doesn't require any, any federal accessibility standards to ever be enacted as enforceable regulations ever. People with disabilities need and deserve better. Let me be clear. The regulations that the bill requires to be enacted within two years are on procedural things, not substantive accessibility standards. The federal government could meet that deadline merely by prescribing the forms that people with disabilities shall use if they want to give feedback to Air Canada or Bell Canada. People with disabilities need and deserve better than that. This legislation splinters its implement enforcement and the setting of enforceable regulations among multiple federal agencies. From the minister's defense of her practice, she conceded that if she was starting from scratch, that isn't necessarily how she'd do it. But her explanation of why she did it gives triumphant ascendancy to federal bureaucracy over disability equality. Now the question is, what do we do about it? The question is not, are you going to pass this bill, senators? You're going to pass this bill. So let's take that off the table. We all know it. We all understand it. That's the starting point. The question before this committee is, are you going to amend it first? And what we do, what we say, is you must. Now, the reality is, this bill needs a lot of amendments, not to make it perfect. That's a red herring. But to get this bill from the status of weak to one that is closer to what people with disabilities need and deserve. In the House, there were a couple of hundred pages of amendments. Hard work over the past weekend has led us to, dial, to, to distill it down to a series of amendments before you that we propose and that you've gotten emails and some deputants who've supported, which fill a grand total of three and a half pages and cover a few core themes. I'm only going to address a couple of them, but let me be clear. There is time to do this. You're going to vote in committee on May 2nd. I understand you'll do third reading by around May 16th. We are working and approaching the federal parties to urge that once amendments are passed, if they are, that the House consider them quickly. So the issue of swift passage of this bill, whether amended or not, is now procedurally not a bar. It's not a bar to your being able to do what we need you to do. So what should you do? Well, let me just focus on a couple. I invite questions on all of what we've proposed. But let's just turn to the headlines. Yesterday, the government of Ontario announced a multi-billion dollar plan for new subways in Toronto. But only if other levels of government, including the federal government, add billions to the allocation the province is committing to. That's not unusual. But we need the federal government to be required, before it spends our money on a project like that, to say a ground rule of getting our federal money is you got to meet certain federal accessibility requirements. Now, the minister came before you a week ago and said, we can't do that. 
We don't have constitutional authority to do that. Respectfully, the minister is wrong. It's called the federal spending power. You heard of the Canada Health Act? The Canada Health Act that says if provinces get federal money for provincial health programs, they must meet federal accessibility requirements, not disability accessibility, their financial accessibility. If what the minister told you is right, then the Canada Health Act had pardon me, the Canada Health Act has been unconstitutional for over three decades since it was enacted, enacted. And I'd be staggered to believe that that is the position of the current federal government. If they can do it there, they can at least attach strings when they give money, if they agree to, to local uh, projects, not just federal buildings. And you might look at me and say, oh, come on, in, in 2019, we wouldn't use public money to build inaccessible public transit. Senators, go to YouTube. Search on AODA Alliance and public transit. You'll see a video that we released during last spring's provincial election that's gotten thousands of views and media coverage where we document serious accessibility problems in brand new subway stations in Toronto that just opened within the past year and a half. This isn't about perfect, folks. This is about basic equality. So we ask for an amendment that would at least require federal ministers or their ministries, if they're agreeing to give our federal money to a province, a municipality, a college or a university for a project like that, that the federal government put as a term of the agreement an enforceable term, just like the Canada Health Act, that accessibility requirements are required. Why should the federal government ever allow federal money to be used to create new barriers or perpetuate existing ones? Let me give you just one other core amendment. My colleague from the CNIB said the minister last week had agreed to amend the bill uh, to ensure that, it, that the bill does not curtail in any way the human rights code and the duty to accommodate. Now, I hope the minister does that, but I don't hear her as having said that. I hear her as having said that she, as a human rights lawyer, a former human rights lawyer, has ensured that this bill doesn't interfere with the duty to accommodate. But senators, it threatens to. Section 172 of the bill perpetuates a provision in the Canada transportation legislation which would let the CTA enact a regulation and once it does so to set standards for accessible transit, no matter how low that standard may be, no matter how deficient from a human rights standard may be, I as a traveler with a disability or others in my coalition or anyone in Canada is barred from asking any more under the legislation's guarantee against undue barriers. With that provision of the act, our position is please don't ever enact any standards under the CTA because they threaten to take away our rights. A simple amendment would repeal that provision from the act. Let me conclude by inviting questions on the other areas that we've raised and telling you that we aren't just about saying what's wrong. We're about proposing constructive suggestions uh, for what's right. And the amendments we've placed before you are designed for a Senate that has a limited time frame to act, a commitment to respect policy decisions uh, made in, in the House of Commons, and an eagerness to ensure that these amendments can be considered by the House quickly and easily with a realistic chance of them being taken seriously. They are designed to be tailored both to our needs and to what the minister said to you uh, last week. So we ask you to take them all uh, uh, seriously. They are all substantive and they all bear on the needs of all people with disabilities. I conclude by saying this, as an individual, I'm speaking for my coalition, but as an individual, I first came before parliament 39 years ago as a much younger individual 
My wife said I had hair back then when she saw the video. And uh, to appear before the Standing Committee considering the Charter of Rights. At that time, the Charter proposed to guarantee equality, but not to people with disabilities. And I and a number of other folks argued and succeeded in getting the Charter amended to include that right. I leave you with two thoughts. First, the amendments we seek are aimed at making that right become a real reality, not just as a matter of good intention, but as effective implementation. 